Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to give you a couple of updates. One on the barn. We just had it repainted, so I want to show you what it looks like. I want to show you where we're at in the process with our root cellar. And then there's a couple of projects I want to do out here, kind of by the pergola area. I want to show you the pondless waterfall and kind of talk about that um, because it's been in now for a little while. Uh, so I think we'll start with the barn because I actually need to go get some supplies to do some work out here. We're going to be hedging up some boxwoods or sphering them up trimming them up all right here's the new barn we decided to have it painted white with black accents to match the house and the chicken coop and the tool shed so that everything had kind of the same look so if i swing to the right you can see the chicken coop right there doesn't that look pretty to have them complement each other before the barn was a gray but very blue undertone and i liked it i thought it was a very peaceful color but it was starting to peel and kind of starting to fall apart like the whole fascia board up here, they replaced that whole thing before they painted it black because it was just, it was just starting to rot. So it just looks so fresh and clean. Now you can see I don't have lights up yet. Um, the other things that we're gonna be doing here, hopefully by the end of this next month, we are having a third garage door installed right there. And while he's here doing that, we decided to have this middle door reframed so that it's actually in the middle of the barn. <laughs> And I know that that seems super fussy and it honestly never really bothered me before because the whole thing was unbalanced. I mean, there was this huge blank wall right there. I mean, that was always off and I knew it, but it just was like kind of part of the charm. But we figured long term we'd be happier if we just went for it and had this one reframed as well when that one's being put in. And that was totally not the plan at all. We were just out here talking, Aaron and I, about it, about the whole project. And uh, we were talking with the guy who's gonna be installing the garage door and he just said, it's not gonna take very much to reframe that middle one. And I think in the end, you will like the look of it so much better because once you get that third one in, it's really gonna throw you off. And he's probably right. So all very exciting things. We did get new shutters as well and decided to put one of the pots here here because we don't access this walkway for anything big just to walk and it doesn't neck it down very much at all like if I move over here you can see it's still pretty wide I don't know why I just never thought about it and when we need to get anything from behind the barn we typically take it out through a wider opening back here into the lawn and then out this big opening here so we figured we'll just put a pot here we'll end up probably leaving these two and then this one on this end will be shifted to the outside of the door. In fact, we could probably do that now. So we'll still have the four pots, but they'll also be spaced more balanced as well. And then when the doors are all in, you can see where our lights were. There were only two out here. We're gonna have four put in. So we'll have an extra one put in here, two new ones there, and then an extra one there. So we'll have four lights spanning the distance. And then we had the kind of a weird light right here. I don't even know what it was for. And it always was green. So we hardly ever had it on. Anyway, we're gonna cap that whole thing so that you can't see that anymore because it's really unnecessary to have that light up there once we have all the lights installed on the bottom. So that's where we're at with the barn on the outside, but we have to go inside to look at the root cellar. Whew. But it's dark. So I'm gonna open this door back up. So starting on the outside of the barn, we're right outside of that middle door just for point of reference. If we go in and you'll have to ignore the piles, our whole barn is in a disheveled state at the moment. But look, the root cellar is all framed in. This is where he's been doing all of his work here. And it's just so exciting. Because if you remember, that was just a cubby. I mean, the wall that came out here was there. It wasn't closed in in the front though. And we just stored random stuff in there. It really was doing no good. And a root cellar is so much better use of the space, I think. So the initial thought was to have the door on the front here instead of the side, but we decided, you know, the Eddie who was putting it in, he was like, you know, if you put it on the side, you'll still be able to put one shelf here for storage on the outside and you'll have room for one of our big shelves that we like to put in. We still have room to put one on that side too. So how do we put the door in the front? It would render the whole rest of the space pretty much useless because we couldn't fit a shelving unit and now we can fit two instead of just one on the side. So I love it when people who know what they're doing come in and have a mind for that. So nice. So the door you can see is leaning up here. It's going to swing out this way. So as you walk up, the doorknob will be here and it'll swing out like that. So we'll have very easy access into the space. It is roughly six by nine in here. So nine feet this way, 
six feet this way, just a little bit over by a couple inches either way. So he's just got another piece to put in here as well as the ceiling and then the next step is the electrician. We need him to come run a light as well as some outlets. Uh, and then a vent will go in here in the back which will help with humidity levels and then the AC heat unit will go right here. The outside also needs to be framed in. It's a double layer of high density insulation. Uh, so it's four inches thick on all the walls and the ceiling. Uh, so it should be very, very efficient. And as you look in here, I think I'll be able to use this entire wall space, of course, for shelves. The back wall space up until the AC unit, which I think he said he could get it up about this high. So, I mean, plenty of space. And then uh, this side, I'll be able to put shelving units as well. The only wall that we'll just have to see is this one here. Because the door, you know, you walk in here, you don't really want to put anything right here. I might be able to use this space for some more like skinny stuff or I could put hooks and put my peppers that I have strung up to dry. They could hang out out here. And I really feel like this is the perfect amount of space. I mean, there's just going to be four of us, right? So like I can fit so much food in here of what we've grown and anything else that we have, we will just give away. So I really feel like this is the perfect size. I don't feel like, I mean, stepping in here, once I get stuff in here, it'll probably feel different too. But I step in here and I'm just like, this is perfect. And we modeled this one after my parents. They have one in the back of their barn that they had installed. So it's an above ground, just insulated room like this. Um, the only thing that we didn't do that they did is we didn't have uh, permanent shelving put in. They had built-in shelving. And I think if they could go back, they might have it in a, installed in a way that they could adjust it because they can adjust their shelves or they may have figured out a different configuration. So I think what I'm gonna do is live with it for a season, just using baker's racks and whatever. I've got a harvest rack from Gardener Supply I'll show you here in a second that I'm gonna use in here. I just wanna utilize it and like move stuff around and figure out how we can best utilize the space before we go into like putting in more permanent shelving. We may never do that. We may not need to. Uh, so let me show you that harvest rack. I think I've showed it to you in a video before. And here are some of the things that are destined for the root cellar. Anything that isn't given away or used in decorations. I've used a few so far. But here is the harvest rack. Now I have it backwards. So the shelves actually come out the other way. Uh, but some of the shelves have these bamboo rack uh, trays here where you can put smaller items. I put like garlic on here and smaller onions one year. Other ones you can line up butternut squash or acorns. Um, you can also take a shelf out if you need it deeper. So if you've got some larger squash you wanna fit in. It's a really pretty rack. I like the way it looks. Not that that should matter, but you know, it's kind of fun when it's pretty too. All right, so those are the updates on the barn. Now I need to get my hedge trimmers and I think maybe a little sheet to catch my boxwood clippings. I think that's all I'm gonna need today. It should be pretty easy. Okay, so this is where I want to do a little work. You can see the pergola right behind the gazebo. You can see the gorgeous Virginia creeper. And I know that it's an invasive vine for a lot of you guys, but it really isn't here. I mean, it's it climbs itself around. It spreads itself around, but it's really easy to pull up. So I kind of like it. I've got, in, got it in a few spaces in our garden. I think the berries are beautiful and the fall color is gorgeous. I'll probably be pulling some of this out today because this is our project. These are the boxwoods that need to be trimmed up. I mean, I can make them into a hedge at this point because there's not very much circular about them, but I thought it would be really pretty back here to keep these like tight spheres instead of a hedge. Let's look at them from a different angle. Oh, look at the pinky winky hydrangea with the Virginia creeper in it. Come on. Yeah, I'll handle that in a minute. So I've got 11 boxwoods in this area. Hey, Russell. Hey, bud. Kitty kitty. Hey, how are you doing? Anyway, 11 boxwoods. There are five on this side. And I left an opening right here so that you could get through to the area right behind the gazebo where Benjamin's teepee is. And then on this side, there are six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Kind of hard to distinguish at this point. So I'll cut away the Virginia creeper, kind of clean it up, and then get these boxwoods 
taken care of. Now it is getting pretty late, so you might be thinking I'm a little crazy for trimming my boxwoods at this point in time. I wouldn't trim boxwoods that are exposed. Like I'm looking at the ones out here. Let me turn the camera around. See those boxwoods out there around the fountain? Those have no protection whatsoever. So I'm avoiding trimming anything that's exposed like that because if we do dip down suddenly in temperature, it can cause some winter burn on that freshly cut surface. These are really protected. Our 10 day doesn't show anything close to freezing. Um, they're underneath this canopy. So I think I'm okay. And honestly, like it's, it's now or never. It's now where I'm gonna make them into a hedge, you know, next spring, we'll see. And the other thing I wanna get done really quick in this area are planting up the two urns that are here. So you can see the ivy is just loving its life. The inkberry hollies, not so much. <laughs> I planted these last fall. And this is how they came out of the winter. And this is how they've looked all year long. <laughs> Can you believe that? There's like one stem with a little bit of life. They just weren't high on the priority list this year. So I've got to take the, the dead shrub out of both of these. And I'm going to replace them with arborvitas. These are the tater tot arborvitas. Inkberry hollies aren't as hardy as arborvitas. And they also like more acidic soil than we have and arborvitas handle our, our environment way better. So I think, I mean, right now it looks like it's way too shaded for them, um, but in just two weeks time probably, this canopy of leaves of Virginia creeper, maybe three weeks, two, three weeks, they'll all be gone and this area will be sunny all throughout the winter. So these arbs should be great, uh, winter hardy enough to take it. They'll be very simple still, you know, just the evergreen and the ivy. If I feel like there's room enough to tuck some pansies, I'll do that, but I don't even care. I just wanna get something in here other than something dead. And then real quick while we're here, and I feel like this video is becoming more of a show and tell than a project video, uh, I wanna talk about the pondless waterfall because it's right here. So as you're walking through the area, you come up on the new water feature, which we just put a video up about it. I absolutely love it. So we've been able to live with it for a while now. I did pull the gravel away from the water access or the access rather to the water reservoir. So the water reservoir is a four by four big tank that holds 98 gallons of water. There's no real good way to tell how fast you're, you know, you need to fill it or how often you need to fill it. So I decided just to pull the gravel from just this little access and watch it for a few days just to see like how many days go, go by this time of year uh, before I need to fill it again. I really don't want it to get to a point where the pump is sucking air. That's the only other way I can, you know, imagine to tell. So anyway, that's why that is the way it is. And then the couple other things I'm gonna fix, Benjamin loves to go up here. So, you know, some of the mulch has sloughed, which I knew would happen, it happens with every project. So I need to clean that up. You can see a little liner. I think I'm gonna take this plant out right here and probably the lemon coral sedum so Benjamin can access this whole side without, you know, having to work around plants. But I absolutely love it. I mean, it came out better than I could have imagined it. I mean, I should have known. The pond guys do such a great job. But it's right by our gazebo, so if I swing around, you know, we can sit in the gazebo, hear that noise. I just like find myself finding excuses to walk back here even more now. Okay, now I need to get some work done. So I'm just gonna take after these boxwoods. I'll set up the camera. Hopefully it goes really well. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> much better there's a sense of order oh I've been craving that in this spot this entire season I did lift the canopy of the Virginia creeper just a little bit there were some that were just like hanging way down and they kept getting caught up in my hair and everything so I thought I'm done with this lifted the canopy got the boxwoods trimmed 
most of them had a decent shape underneath all that wooliness. I do think it's going to take another season, maybe two, to get them really nice and thick. Because some of them, like these two in particular, if you get close, when I started trimming these, they had growth like way up here, but it was really airy. There was no density to it. And you can see even here, if I were to take this boxwood down to where it's dense, it would have to go into about here. That's where the density is. So if I keep trimming it, you know, into this shape, it's going to encourage more side shoots and it should fill in, but it'll just take a little bit. And then this one has a little bit of a gap right here that I, it just wasn't there. I kind of remember that about it when I planted it. This was smaller than the other 10 when I planted it. These were five gallon size. I think that was like a two and a half gallon and it's hanging in there. I need to be better about cutting the lamium away from it because the lamium kind of wants to choke everything out. So pretty though. And then here's this side right here, cleaned the Virginia creeper off of these right here and everything went pretty smooth. Um, I did cut a couple of larger branches on the Virginia creeper when I was cutting that boxwood because you can see they are just kind of growing together there. So I'm not sure. I'm expecting to see some wilting <laughs> happening somewhere in this vine. Maybe I cut an old branch, who knows? We'll see, time will tell. And then the containers, I cut the old dead ink berries out, put the arborvitas in, and I did have enough room to squeeze six little yellow pansies in each one of the containers. And it's just very simple and clean and pretty. And I really like the ivy. I thought for a second about trimming it up, but I think it's just so pretty to have that abundance look, especially when we have some structure. It's so helpful. Like I love an abundant looking flower bed, like cottage style. I mean, if you look over here, you can see, I mean, there's just a lot of different textures going on, a lot of different plants, but I feel like I need structure in among all of that kind of wildness. I mean, this whole flower bed is just full of beautiful stuff. But to me, it looks prettier. Like everything looks prettier when there's some structure to look at, some rest for your eye. And the whole time I was able to hear the sound of the beautiful water feature over here. I just feel like this whole area is just taking on a new life. And it's so fun to see the transformation. Oh, I did want to pop over here and give you an update on the succulent container too. It is looking pretty darn good. I uh, groomed a couple, oh, I missed one, a couple of dried leaves off the bottom and I trimmed a couple of bloom stalks that were spent. But I mean, that's the original planting right there and that was months ago. They've done really well out here. Oh, that one has a weird shape. I need to fix that. <laughs> So you gotta look at them from all angles. And that's pretty much it for today, guys. I just really wanted to get these trimmed up because I know our 10 day forecast at least looks really beautiful. I would never attempt to trim boxwoods this late in the season if they're exposed. But like I said, these are really protected. In fact, I think I'm gonna go grab some wilt stop. We should do that really quick, um, which is like a pine resin and it kind of coats the leaves and helps uh, prevent water loss and can help with wind burn and, and some of that kind of damage. Um, so I'll go ahead and spray them. Let me grab it quick. I think I'm going to try to find a ready to use here. There it is. Right here. So it prevents winter kill, wind burn, sun scald, salt damage, and drying out. Oh, <laughs> did I scare you, buddy? I'm sorry. I just came barreling out of the barn, didn't I? Hey. So all I'm going to do is just take this and just give them a thorough spray. All the way around, everywhere that I cut and that should help reduce any damage should the weather turn. Usually you wanna wait until late summer, early fall when it's cooled off a bit, but you wanna give your boxwood several weeks to acclimate to the temperature kind of going down before you hit freezing. Uh, last year we trimmed our boxwoods a little bit late and I think they were trimmed a little too severely uh, and we had a weird snap. It went from 40 degrees down to nine degrees, two nights, 40 degrees one night, nine degrees the next. And it just, I showed you guys in videos earlier this year, the Versailles boxwoods in particular were just nailed. And it just, it didn't kill anything, thank goodness, but it damaged probably the top four inches of the boxwood hedges and it took them all year to rebound. So you really do wanna be careful about when you're trimming, where they're at. I think I'll be okay here. This will help. Um, I love the containers. I think those are really fun and sweet and simple. And this area is just making me happy. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.